welcome to Season 7 of Paper Talk, where we share stories about growing and thriving in your creative business. I'm Quinn Nguyen of Pink and Posey. I'm Jessie Chu of Crafted to Bloom. And I'm Sarah Kim of Handmade by Sarah Kim. In this season, we want to explore the evolution of an artist's journey and the growth and struggle of having a business. Plus, we'll chat with other entrepreneurs and artists to uncover their keys to success. So get ready to unlock the potential in your creative journey with us. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Paper Talk. I'm changing things up this season. We're going to be doing this thing called Hot Seat. And I'm going to be spotlighting each of us in this particular hot seat. And today, Hot Seat is going towards Sarah. And we want to talk about the different challenges that she has faced as being a business owner, being an artist, what she's faced over the years, and how did she overcome the challenges? So Sarah... Tell us about the challenge you're facing right now. I want to say I've been in business now for 13 years, so it has been a long time. I was telling you about this earlier, but basically I feel just putting in a lot of time into your business, into your art is going to be the most important thing and the biggest challenge. It is, it is time. And especially as we're getting older, that time is even more precious. But it reminds me of like I watched an interview with Billie Eilish and she's seriously one of my favorite singers. And her brother, the music producer or like the songwriter, he had a quote from his favorite book and it said something about putting in 10,000 hours for you to master something or to be called a master of something, whatever art it is. For them, it was music. And he had written 10,000 hours on his wall. And it really made me feel like, oh, that's the experience you need and the challenge you have to go through to learn and grow and feel accomplished in a sense. I want to say my challenge was all that time that I put into going through different things in my business. I've literally went through so many different mediums. My business has changed a lot over the years that I've been experimenting and doing trial and errors. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I think that's what made me and my brand. But yeah, I almost feel bad because I know that a lot of our listeners could be new in their business or new artists. And some of them are like moms like me. And I know that we don't have time. But yeah, I feel like sometimes that's it. It, The experience will set you apart. Yeah, some of my challenges, like I guess I could say that I've been rejected. I've had plenty of complaints from customers. I've had shipments that didn't make it on time. Like I felt so bad. I would even do shipments like two weeks, three weeks earlier and it wouldn't get there on time just because. And it was like from California to California. It it must have been just my luck. And yeah, all of that. And I'm like, sitting in my workspace crying. I'm like, oh no, I feel so bad because it was like their wedding date or something like that. So those are all just random challenges. I've had plenty of flowers, specifically to paper flowers. I've had plenty of flowers that just didn't make the cut. So much fun. I have so much fun (laughs) doing that. Yeah. I wish I could get paid for doing all the trial and errors that didn't make the cut, but that's literally my fun time doing the research and making it and then seeing if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. I got to try again. And actually, one of my recent flowers that I've done, it was the plumerias. I've done it like a handful of times and it just didn't make the cut because it's a plain flower. And it's not personally, it's not my favorite flower. Although when I went to Hawaii, it was like beautiful because there there's a lot more flowers on the tree than the ones in California. There's no real pattern. It is a pattern, but it's it's not fluffy. It's not that colorful. Some might be colorful. You, you understand, right? So am I the only one? Yes, yes, like, yeah. yeah, but I revisited it like recently because I knew I was going to go to Hawaii and I was like, oh, I want to make a content out of it before I go because it's like such a like a flower that I think of when I think of Hawaii. And I sat there for like hours trying to manipulate my paper and figure out how to get that that perfect look that plumerias kind of have. And even the color, it's not really... It's not really watercolor. It's not really a pink where it has like it like distinct like line. Mm-hmm. So it it's really like a soft be, ombre. Color. Yes, and hard to do. <laughs> and to do so many of them because you can't just make yeah. one. Like the whole point of the plumerias is like a bundle. Part of my business is to also think about ways how I could 
let other people try making them themselves. It should be semi beginner friendly too. And so all the stuff that I was doing, I was like, but that's too much work. <laughs> like, I'm never going to make <laughs> more than one. You thought, yeah, I tried it out with some crayons that I've got and I like blended it out and it actually worked. And the yellow was an easy color to blend out because it's not like a harsh like red or anything like that. So it looked gradient enough. And then I added like wire. You guys could check out my recent plumerias. But basically there was so much trial and error that went into that. And then all the hours from all the other things that I've made in the past. So yeah, I want to say my biggest thing is Mm -hmm. putting time into it. And also balancing your family life because you have a child that you are, Mm -hmm. he's almost a teenager now, right? (laughs) Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Not yet. He looks like one. Yeah. <laughs> he's so tall. He's so tall, but he's actually only seven. I know. <laughs> a lot of people, he's in the hundred, like 99 percent. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. He's so deceiving. <laughs> he's like almost as tall as me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, work-life balance is sometimes I'm like, as an artist, there is no such thing. <laughs> but that's also no something you have to learn and that's going to be a challenge and how to figure out yeah where your priorities go like even as a business owner too I like knowing where my priorities need to go for my business and one of the things in the past my priority was Instagram it was like posting on Instagram every day or making sure I produce solely for Instagram that was like my priority And then I think about all the other things. But then I switched it up actually this year. I made it so that my priority is to film for YouTube. And then from whatever videos I get from my YouTube, I'll post it on my Instagram. So my Instagram is actually my leftovers in a sense so that I could prioritize YouTube. And I feel my goal is to grow on YouTube. I feel finding those priorities and you can shift them at any time. And again, that comes with time to grow your Instagram and then be, okay, I think I'm good here. And then refocus your energy on something else. Yeah, that's right. I also want to share that Sarah is an amazing researcher. She studies and she dissects everything from studying other YouTube videos to studying different methods to like, how do you portray something amazing? And I think Sarah hit it out of the park and I've watched her grow her YouTube channel over the years. And to see her quality of the video, upgrading her equipment, just showing her teaching is completely different if you study it from the very beginning. I love how you have evolved your business. And yes, you're right. It takes time. It takes effort. It's not letting time pass. It's doing the work, studying things, reading up on things, talking to people. I think that's the amazing thing about knowing both of you is you guys push me to the limits. Oh, Jesse's such an amazing teacher. Why am I not teaching the way she is? But I have to find my own style. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the really important thing is like you need to push yourself to find your own identity. And mm-hmm. imposter syndrome plays such a big part in mm-hmm. every single stage that you're growing your business because you're switching hats all the time. I didn't really call myself an artist until recently. And to think that I have now a book and I do consider myself an artist because you take so much from your environment and you put it in. And I think because we're all Asian here, I think we have the Asian mentality of our parents saying, you need to be an accountant. You need to be an engineer. You're never good enough. (laughs) And I think that was really hard to wear that artist hat. And I think, Sarah, you've done such an amazing job. And I love how supportive your family is. And I think that has helped a lot. Oh, thank you. That's I'm actually so excited for this kind of theme uh, topic that we're going to have this season, because I think all three of us like will have different accomplishments and challenges that we've faced and like what it means to us as an artist now. I think Mm -hmm. that's going to be pretty interesting to learn about us. I always have to be on my toes when it comes to business. Because it's not my forte, but I know that I have to do, I have to learn and put my time into it. Yeah, I do research a lot. I do research my, even how to talk on podcasts. I listen to so many different podcasts because of Paper Talk. Because I want to know what are the different topics, what are, what's trending or how people are talking. I know that a handful of podcasts actually 
they get, it's like scripted. And I don't know as a listener, do I like that? I don't even know what I'm researching, but I need to know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely watch a lot of different YouTube channels that I could also learn from. So just learning. And we were also talking about this earlier, but I'm recently watching a culinary Korean show on Netflix. It like just came out. If you guys are on Netflix, they probably um, pop up. But it's an interesting take on their cooking show because they have experienced chefs. The other team is also experienced, but they're just not as experienced as the other ones, like the renowned ones. Like they have Michelin star restaurants and they've also won a handful of different cooking competitions and things like that. So like I and then there's a little bit of a spoiler alert for you guys, but like a lot of the ones that are renowned, like they're almost unbeatable. And I think not that I'm saying I'm unbeatable, but like <laughs> putting that time and experience and these people have been doing it like all their life. And a lot of them are older as well. You can't beat it even with the creativity that like the younger ones have or like the ones that do have still a lot of experience, but they're just not in that next tier of level of expertise and like mastering in their cooking. Even I was like, really? It's really it's that just, different? Yeah. But I think it is. And it reminded me of also like when I eat my like food from my mom or like from my aunt, like their food is delicious, even though they don't try. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they can kind of whip something up and that's experience. And mm -hmm. I do like to think actually my trial and error process after being in this for so long has shortened. It doesn't take me like weeks or anything. It's definitely like shorter, but I still have to learn. I still have to be a work in progress. Yeah. And I do still need to put my time into it. But it, I could tell that I made progress. Yeah. Well, that 10,000 hours is not all the same, right? If, yeah. Like yes. the first 10 hours is very different from your last 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. It's you have different experience. It's like experience on top of experience. In fact, if it takes you longer later on, we wonder, what did I learn from the 10,000 hours? Yes. Um, and the thing is, we often see people's results. We don't see all that hard work that goes into it. We don't see the 10,000 hours that Sarah put in the last 13 years or more than 10,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. Way more. Right? <laughs> way more. But we don't see that. We just see the end results. And so it's hard for people to truly appreciate how much time it takes. And you tend to think, oh, she can do that. Why can't I do that? And Because yeah. they haven't put in their 10,000 hours. But yeah, like it's a good reminder, I think, of the challenges of having to put that time in. That's the hard work and effort that I think is or puts or sets you apart from someone else who doesn't put those hours in. So true. So everyone starts at ground zero. It takes time, it takes effort, learn from your trial and error, and you will grow. You will, today, you're not the same as yesterday because a lot of things does happen in a 24-hour period and what you put in it. So put a lot of effort, what you're passionate about and what you want to grow, and you're guaranteed to see a change. It might be good, it might be bad, but you're going to learn from it for sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for sharing this particular topic with us. And I hope you guys will send us messages. We want questions from you. Let us know what you want from us as we continue to grow season seven and talk more about our challenges, our success stories. What do you want to learn from us? And I think you're going to be surprised at the, some of the stories that we're going to be sharing with you this season. And our next hot seat will be coming up in the next few episodes. So tune back. Now to my favorite part of our episode where we end the show with life hacks. I want to start off first because I'm super excited about this one. I love beauty products. I think that's super fun to always do and to change things up. But I was watching this particular TikTok video about my favorite beauty makeup artist. And she was saying, what's the difference between professional makeup artist versus a regular normal person? And she said, have two different foundation on you. So what you want to do is put a lighter. You want to keep in the same family shade as your skin tone, but one that matches your skin. You want it close to your center of your face, from your cheek to your eye to your nose. And then on the perimeter of your face, you want to do one shade darker, just around to give it more dimension. 
Then you take a brush and you blend everything out. And I tried it and it made such a big difference. I feel like I have a very round face <laughs> and to be able to not make it so round. What? <laughs> yes, exactly. We're chiseled. Yes, we're chiseled. And my other one is keep your face mask in the fridge. Keep it nice and cold because yes. you want to put it on to your face when it's nice and cool and it'll help with any puffiness. And leave it on for at least a minimum of 20 up to an hour and or when the face mask dries out. How about you, Sarah? What's your life hack this time? I actually watched that one and I think I know what you're talking about. It's not putting bronzer, but yes. instead you're working with foundation. So it's still, yes. it's not stand out like yeah. the way bronzer would be. Yeah, I yes. like that. Yeah, and the but, thing is, I had in the summertime, I'm a little bit darker. So I just yeah. used this foundation I had in the summer. In the wintertime, right. I'm lighter. So yeah. I already had it on here. I was like, oh, I'm going to yeah. try it. And it totally Perfect. works. It really brightened things up. And I was like, oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I guess going along with the whole makeup yeah. thing, I actually, my life hack would be when I'm doing my social media posts, I do like to wear makeup because I look like hot mess coming out of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we all do. So I actually like to batch work a lot. And that's, I guess, my life hack is that mm-hmm. you would put your makeup on once a week. That that doesn't require that much. I'm not getting ready every day because I am I work, work from home. Yeah, that's too much work. <laughs> too much work. <laughs> and then I change my outfits. So what I end up doing oh, is... Oh, that's I, so smart. Yeah. <laughs> I film like Monday, Tuesday. I film almost every day. And then Friday would be the day where I go back and do like more social media posts related things where I'm talking or explaining or go check out this or go check that out or whatever. And it's like more personal. But then I know what I wore during those other videos. So then I pre-record all my regular videos, but I don't show my face. It's usually my hands. Or sometimes I'll have a little bit of my face, but it's not enough to see my whole face. And then let's say Friday would be the day that I would go back and redo my vlog or redo some of my talking points. So I only need to wear makeup once. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I know. So now you're going to judge me when I'm on my camera. You're like, you don't look like that right now. No, I don't look like that. Yeah. I love it. How about you, Jesse? What's oh your gosh. life hack? So when we did our road trip this summer to Cape Cod and Boston, it was about nine. Actually, in total, it was about 11 hours because we had to stop off and go to the restroom and eat. But keeping my kids busy was something I actually looked into ahead of time because I was like nine hours, like, what are they going to do? And it's during the day, right? So we left early, we left at six. So the kids were tired. So they did nap for a couple hours in between. But I got these these trays off of Amazon and they there's like a Velcro strap that straps on to the child's waist. So they're on, they're in the car seat and then you can also strap that that tray on around their their back and so it stays um, but the tray I got I made sure to get one that had a little a bit of a lip closer to their yeah. body because things roll right <laughs> we've all yes. tried doing stuff and it just rolls <laughs> towards our belly so I had a I made sure to buy one with a lip so they were able to construct their lego set there so I also got like a cheap like ten dollar lego set for them so that they could do it on the road. They use the tray also to watch their iPads for an hour. I also had these games, like these like one person games, like mind games, like logic games that they could challenge themselves, but it's only for one person. And so they would play and then they would swap. And then their favorite though was a road trip card game. So essentially it's a bunch of cards where they have to look for certain things that are on the road or around. And there's two ways to play it. One, either you set the timer from now until we get to our destination and they see which person gets the most cards or which person like Ashley was able to achieve all the cards. Or you could do set cards and then see how many of those cards they actually achieve. But that was one of their favorites because like when we were driving down, we saw farmland and we saw like cities, right? So some of those cards were like, oh, a horse or a cow or a lawnmower. So it's like very varied in terms or diverse in terms of what objects you would see. So that was their favorite because the stack was probably like 50 cards. It would be nonstop. And some of them were really fun. One of them was like, oh, a broken headlight, a red pickup truck and stuff that like little kids would 
be really like ecstatic if they saw it. But there were some that were really hard. Some of them were like a baby in the car and like my kids can't see into pe- other people's cars, right? They're not tall enough to see. Yeah. So I would help them. Or there was one where we got stuck on a license plate. Like one of the license plate had to start with L. And for 30 minutes, we never saw any car with a license plate. That was really fun. That took like a good two hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. When so it takes a chunk of their time, it's, oh, yay, score. You're so winning. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. And then the only other thing is obviously like children's music because either audiobook or music. Because if you're like listening to something that you're interested in, they're not, it, it doesn't really doesn't really help with managing the kids. Like they want to hear the kids' songs and stuff. That's so true. Yeah. I want to get the tray for myself, especially when I'm in the car making yeah. paper flowers and rolling yeah, things around. Me. You yeah. can see one with the lip, okay? It has to be one with yes. the lip. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to us and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.